to strap in and strap on. Have you ever wanted to make music the 90s way, but make it incredibly difficult, time-consuming, and portable? Have you ever played rugby? Well then, this is for you. Modding the Vita is huge these days and definitely on trend, so I figured I would capitalize and expose all the things that made my music a bit cool, in the hopes that nobody can be bothered to try and replicate it. Great success! After fiddling with trackers for a bit and getting frustrated with them, I decided to try hunting for something a bit weirder to get my creative juices flowing. Stumbling onto the Dirty Wave M8 definitely hit that spot, but unfortunately, I am broke, and that thing is way too fucking expensive. Brother, hold on, man, hold on, hold on, man, hold on. So then the next logical step for some reason was to look at Game Boy trackers. Again, realizing I neither own nor want to spend money on a Game Boy, I gave up with that. But it did lead me to discover the long abandoned project known as Little Piggy Tracker. After destroying my ears with poorly made chiptune projects from 2008, I realized that this little bit of software was not only a fully-fledged tracker, but also highly capable of making sample-based jungle. Fortunately for me, it also had a ported release to the PSP. So I got to work trying to get it up and running, hoping I could produce some tracks on my Vita. Bit of a gimmick I know, but it's fucking cool nonetheless. Are you sure about that? After recently going down the deep dive of Vita modding myself, it occurred to me that it might be possible to try emulating this tracker using Adrenaline, a PSP emulator for the Vita. Some true emulation inception at play here. People are doing amazing things with the Vita these days, and I will link all sorts of cool shit for you to check out on your own time, because I don't want to take credit for their hard work. On a side note though, there are also a few other pieces of music production software for the PSP, namely Timbaland's abhorrent dog game beaterator. What the hell? Oh my god, no way. PSP SEQ and also PSP Rhythm. These I'm going to save for another video, but as a quick overview, Beaterator is a sort of pocket DAW, PSP SEQ is a synthesizer, sequencer, and PSP Rhythm is a more traditional DAW like interface, but with better functionality than Mr. Timbaland's. Before we get going with the Piggy Jungle, I'm going to give a brief rundown of the history behind music trackers and provide a quick explanation as to how this piece of software actually works. If you want to skip this all and see it in action, I will leave a timestamp on the video, but believe me you will be lost. Although I'm the one explaining this and I still don't really get it either, so do what you want. After this section, I will actually produce some jungle for you to listen to just as a bit of a demo so you can try and copy that if you'd like, or head into the description where I've linked everything you could possibly need to learn how to use this stuff. But if you're on YouTube, you probably don't like reading, so whatever. Anyway, why the fuck do trackers even exist? And who made them? I'm sure you can't wait to find out. So let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Back in the day, small 8-bit audio was the only way to fit music onto tiny game cards. And as a result, you got that crazy glitched out sound in Zelda or Prince of Persia or any other shit like that had. And much like the Vita community, a really fascinating community formed around this. The original tracker, created by Amiga-based musician Karsten Obarski, was a piece of commercial software that would make composing video game soundtracks much more convenient. He called it the ultimate sound tracker. It's from this that all other trackers would develop, and these are known as mod trackers. There is a phenomenal video on this topic I will link in the description below. Once this was released online, people began to modify it to become better and better, releasing physical copies passed to friends with varying features and names. Over time, they developed until they became a standard way to make music. If you ever heard electronic music while pirating some software or used a key gen, that music was almost certainly made on a mod tracker. The most famous of these are probably ProTracker, Octomed, and others. Tons of early 90s electronic dance music, techno, jungle, hardstyle, were made in these. And trackers can be credited to kickstarting many subcultures. It's all sample based and that lent itself to allowing anyone with or without traditional music knowledge to bypass the industry and create amazing music straight from their bedrooms. There's a big parallel between that and the homebrew gaming scene around the Vita. 
I find that cool. There is also modern trackers like Renoise or others that you can utilize, which is pretty sick, especially considering that they contain all the modern functionality of a DAW like Ableton or FL. But I wanted to do it the old school way, so here we are. I think I will save the actual tutorial aspect of this for another video, as it would end up about 4 hours long if I tried to run through everything here. But I will be leaving links to all you need to figure this out for yourself in the description. Can't give up all the sauce. I had no money, I still had sauce. So if you don't got no sauce, then you, you, you lost. Mm -hmm. But you can also get lost in the sauce. You bitch, man, a bitch gonna get lost in the sauce, man. Mm -hmm. I'm sprinkling the sauce, dropping sauce, yeah. and overdose of sauce. You know what I mean? I Basically, if you want to make jungle, all you're going to need is this classic sample pack by Blue Mar 10, amazing producers, called the Jungle Jungle Pack. I used this for my track called Palm. And someone commented, I can't tell if this is really generic or really good. I think that's kind of badass. It's got all the classic samples, pads, vocals, everything you'd want to give this a go. I'm not recommending you rely on this because it will sound somewhat, and I quote, generic. That's right, get no scoops! Get no scoops! But to give it a try, it's perfect. I'll link the pack below. I'll also dive into using it with modern DAWs to integrate your own samples and take it a bit further. To start off with, you're going to need a basic understanding of hexadecimal. I'll provide links below to explanations of how this all works, as I'm not really all that sure myself, but I will give a brief rundown. It's basically combating the issue of figures in old hardware, think Y2K. Because computers could only display a certain amount of numbers to you, we use hexadecimal to display larger and larger numbers. In practical terms, this means that each column of a number written in hexadecimal can represent up to 16 values. Digits in hexadecimal use the standard symbols 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 to represent the corresponding value, and use the first six letters of the alphabet to represent the values 10 through 15. In the standard base 10 system, each column represents increasing powers of 10, while in base 16 each column represents increasing powers of 16. With one hex digit, you can represent numbers up to and including 15. Add another, and you can represent numbers up to 255, 4095, and so on. I stole this explanation. This enables you to sequence way more samples and sections that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Back to it. In their own words, the Piggy implements the user interface of Little Sound DJ, a very famous tracker for the Game Boy platform that has been tried and tested by many users over the years leading to a little complex but yet extremely efficient way of working. Piggy currently supports 8 monophonic 16-bit slash 44, 1K stereo sample playback channels. Additionally, the program can drive MIDI instruments. with the GP32. Who is that coming off the goddamn pick and roll, yeah, boy? And GP2X, a custom MIDI interface is required. In my words, it basically works like a nesting doll. You layer each of these sections on top of each other, slowly building up a line of hexadecimal numbers containing samples in a specific order to lay out a track. It's incredibly confusing, so I'm going to provide you with a big PDF file the creators wrote years ago to explain everything inside this software. It's on the Internet Archive as it's no longer hosted anywhere online, but luckily you can still access it. Great success. Now I think it's high time I actually showed you how this damn thing works. Despite how difficult I have made it all sound, once you get to grips with everything, I would honestly argue it can be a faster and more effective way of producing jungle than anything on the market right now, except maybe Renoise. As a side note, you need to make sure all your samples are set at the same BPM as your project will be, unless of course you don't mind pitch shifting them to fit. I do this in Ableton with most of my samples if I want to use them in the Piggy, 
or I just find things in my files that are the right BPM, and if all else fails, I will pitch shift them inside the tracker. In this bit here, I'm going through adding in the samples I chose earlier for the project and sequencing them into their respective chains and phrases. On the first line of the song screen, I am adding the main break, which I pre-chopped for the sake of the tutorial not becoming too long. Then on the next line I am adding in the main pad. And then on the third I am adding in the bass. On the far right I like to throw some jungle noises or wind or rain, any ambient sound that I think fits nicely with the vibe. In the middle sections I will throw any risers, vocal stabs, or FX that I want to accent over the top of the main loop. Now I'm going to speed it up and show you the finished product because there isn't much else to discuss. Although before I close it off, I want to mention one more noteworthy feature. You can actually export all of these individual chains as stems for mixing and mastering. So you can have each of the eight tracks rendered out in 16-bit WAV for tweaking and mixing in Ableton or any DAW later down the line, if you so please. And I think that about covers it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. If you managed to sit through this god-awful video, thank you very much, I truly appreciate it. If there is anything you would like to ask me, do not hesitate, I absolutely will respond. Hopefully it gave you a giggle or two, if not then, I don't know man, go watch some Markiplier or some shit you sweaty noob. Peace out.